and check this battery charger it says it's full i picked up this syntec battery charger it was on sale at harbor freight the other day trying to keep my deep cycle battery charged up it's really handy to have a spare battery laying around especially in the winter time you never know when a piece of equipment or a car or something might be dead and uh, sometimes it's hard to get another vehicle next to it to jump start it so it's handy just to keep a spare battery charged up and this thing worked really good i put it on the two amp setting lowest setting that it has in the winter mode and uh, it's keeping it full automatically so this is going to be cool so somebody posted a comment on my last video and basically asked me to explain what I meant when I was talking about emissions on these new tractors these days. And uh, I kind of forget sometimes that there are people out there who have never bought a tractor before. Maybe they've never owned a tractor before. And right now they're looking for their very first one and they don't really know, you know, all these ins and outs to them. So let me just briefly explain what I was talking about. All right, let me try to climb, climb over this loader here so I can kind of show you. So basically because of the new EPA standards, uh, the tier four standards, any engine that's 25 and a half horsepower, we'll just round it up and say 26 horsepower for the sake of argument. Anything 26 horsepower or greater has to meet tier four emissions requirements, which means that you're gonna see a lot of stuff under the hood that you don't see on the 25 horse and lower machines. So this is a good example. Obviously this is a 25 horse engine, so it doesn't have to meet those standards. And so you've got a very traditional setup here like you've seen for a hundred years. You know, you've got, that's your air filter over there. Very uh, simple air intake tube going into the air filter. Uh, you've got your injectors down there. Just a very plain, simple mechanical style of injection. You've got a standard muffler. Again, just like you've seen for a hundred years, there's nothing fancy about it. And then the muffler exhausts out the pipe right there. So that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just really simple, uh, really reliable, easy to diagnose if you have an issue. Nothing really under here out of the ordinary. Now, if this were a 26 horsepower engine, it would be over the threshold. So it would be required to have a lot of different things under the hood. One of the more common ones you'll see is a diesel particulate filter, which usually replaces the muffler. It'll look similar to the muffler. Uh, usually they're silver and they might be a little larger in size. And it does what it says it does. It traps the particulate matter coming out of the diesel engine. You know, the smoke and soot and contaminants coming out of the engine get trapped in that filter and it basically cleans the exhaust. The issue with that is that after a while, as you can imagine, it's gonna get full, you know, just like any other filter. Eventually it's gonna get full. So every so many hours, the tractor has to go into a regeneration cycle where it uh, heats up enough that it can burn that soot and everything out of the filter. There are different ways to accomplish that. You know, some, some companies use uh, diesel exhaust fluid and things like that, that they will, you know, they'll have an injector on your exhaust pipe that injects the diesel exhaust fluid into the exhaust, and then it runs into a catalyst, a very fancy catalytic converter called an SCR, selective catalyst. Um, you know, there's different strategies on how to do this. I've got, you know, DPFs and SCRs and DOCs and all these different acronyms that you can go online and study, but there's different ways to skin the cat. Bottom line is they have to clean the exhaust before it gets to the exit of the pipe. And that requires a lot of very expensive and very complicated equipment. And it actually uh, causes the tractor to use more fuel because it has to run at a higher RPM and generate heat to clean that filter out basically and burn everything off. Now, the other thing that some of these tier four emissions tractors will have is exhaust gas recirculation, EGR, which you've probably heard of. And basically they're taking some of the exhaust and they're pumping it back into the engine so it can get cleaned a second time and burned and uh, basically it reduces emissions in that way as well. The problem with that, as you can imagine, is that you've got nasty dirty exhaust being put back into your engine. 
so it's not good for the longevity of the engine. So bottom line is all this equipment that they have to put on there to meet requirements, to clean the exhaust up, it causes the engine to be less reliable over time. Uh, it's expensive when it goes bad one day and you do have to replace it. It's extremely expensive to replace. Uh, you're looking at thousands of dollars if you have to replace things like a diesel particulate filter and you know things like that. Um, and it's just basically a headache. So that's why so many people want to avoid it if at all possible. Unfortunately, if you go above 25 and a half horsepower, you can't avoid it unless you buy an older tractor that was built prior to the tier four emissions requirements. So that's basically what's up with it. This is a very simple setup, uh, which is exactly the reason why I wanted it. You know, my assumption is that a guy can learn to work on something like this. You know, being, uh, being more mechanical in nature, you can learn to work on something like this if you have to. And if you don't want to do that, even if you take it to the dealer for service one day, it'll be easier and less expensive for them to fix it. So there's definitely benefits. So the latest development on uh, the tractor shopping take two <laughs> is that, uh, you know, I've been looking around at lots of different brands. It's going to end up coming down to Deer or New Holland again for reasons that I think I've outlined in previous videos. Um, and today I found out that there was a, an attachment called a brush crusher made by a company called Westendorf. If you're into tractors, you've probably seen those. It's a grapple that does not require hydraulics. And uh, so you save a ton of money by going that way, but they still work pretty good based on all the videos I've seen. And that would be super handy around the property here. So I had bought one of those a long time ago, like, gosh, I was looking at those things before I even had the tractor, to be honest. Uh, they're really hard to get. You know, they're telling me right now at least six weeks. Some dealers are saying six months lead time just to try and get one. But I, I placed an order thinking that maybe in the spring it would show up. And I found out today that it actually has arrived at the dealer and they're going to ship it out tomorrow. So I'm going to have that a lot sooner than I expected thing about that is uh, the one I ordered has the skid steer style attachment like this bucket does and as you know the John Deere tractors don't have that John Deere is kind of like Apple they make everything proprietary to try and force you to come back to their brand for everything more and more money you know kind of greedy but anyway so if I traded this tractor in and I got a John Deere tractor then that brand new attachment that I have coming uh, would not work. So that would be kind of a bummer. Um, and since they're shipping it out tomorrow, I don't really have time to call them and say, hey, can you send me the John Deere version instead? You know, that's not an option anymore at this point. So, so as of today, that kind of marks John Deere off the list. And uh, so now, basically, uh, what Tucker and I are gonna do here is either keep this tractor and just learn to live with it, learn to work a lot slower, uh, which is, kind of looking like that maybe at the top of the list. Or I could take this tractor back and trade it in for the exact same tractor with the 40 horsepower turbo motor, which would be awesome because I love this tractor, has everything I want and everything I need. If I could just put more power into it, I would love it forever. Uh, but if I do that, that's an additional, I don't know, six or $7,000 on top of what I paid for this one. And then you get the diesel particulate filter. You know, I think it even has EGR on it. You got a turbo to worry about. Uh, a lot more parts under the hood to worry about over time. So not only is it more expensive now, I have a feeling it could be more expensive later as well. So the power comes at a price, uh, definitely. So I guess I'm gonna, I don't know, think about it a little more tonight, decide what I'm gonna do. But uh, the blue brand is probably going to stay here at the Crow's Nest and uh, we're gonna be seeing more blue on the channel in the future is the way it's looking. But uh, anyway, update for the day. Hey, when I get that brush, brush crusher from Westendorf, I'll show that to you. Uh, it's super cool how it works and I can't wait to try it out around here. 42 years been doing things the hard way. It's time to start doing things the easy way. Don't you think, Tucker? 
Oh, and in addition to the uh, attachment that showed up early, I had these things here that came also that I completely had forgotten that I ordered. I got these from Messix. You've probably seen Neil's videos all over YouTube uh, on the New Holland and Kubota tractors. Uh, this is the toolbox, and it's got some bracketry in there uh, to attach the toolbox to the ROPS. Uh, so it gives you a little bit of storage if you want to put, I'm going to put pliers and things in there because it's so much easier to pull those clips and pins out back there if you've got some pliers, especially when the cold weather hits, you know, it hurts your hands if you don't have pliers. And then this is the rubber floor liner because the Workmaster has the metal floors, which is okay, it's not a big deal. Uh, but the Boomer series has the really nice rubber mat. So I went ahead and picked up a rubber mat to put in there too. You know, I ordered all this stuff, uh, gosh, like a while back. Like I said, some of it, I think I ordered before I even had the tractor home. You know, before all this came up, I didn't anticipate all this kind of stuff happening. So I had ordered this stuff and now it's showing up. So I guess I might as well use it. The cool thing is, you know, obviously, you know, if I trade this tractor and get the Workmaster 40, the operator station is the same. So I could still use this and the toolbox. Um, since that attaches to the ROPS, I guess you could use that on any tractor, but this should still fit even the Workmaster 40. So uh, no biggie there. If I decide to go that route, I can just swap things over. Not a big deal, but I'm gonna open this floor mat up and see how it fits and what it looks like. You know, there's some bolts down there. I'm assuming that I'm gonna have to just take those out, put the rubber mat in, and then bolt them back down. But let me open this thing up and we'll check it out and see. Yeah, so I've got it just laying in here. Uh, and I guess there's no provisions in there, but I guess you could just take those screws out, maybe drill some holes. I guess those are bolts. I'm sure they're probably nutted on the bottom side so you just have to drill some holes in certain places and anchor that down but i mean it fits pretty good it's all wrinkled up where it's been in the box but it fits pretty good so just a little bit nicer you know like i said not a big deal but just a little bit nicer all right so i got those simple projects done the floor mat is in I just simply took those out and put the, you could actually, once you take the bolt out of the floorboard, you could actually push with your thumb and you could find the hole pretty easy. And then I just ran a drill bit down through there, put the bolts back in, so that worked out nice. And then here's the toolbox kit right here. And it just kind of snaps open, gives you a place to, Put some pliers or pins or you know general things you might like to keep with you on a tractor. It just bolts right to the ROPS, so pretty simple. You could use this on any tractor actually. So a couple little things, you know, just like I said, not big deals, but helpful minor minor little items. Now it's time to chill out and play with a puppy, huh? <laughs> we'll get into something else tomorrow.